This episode of the Sam Oldham Podcast is sponsored by Turn, the only brand dedicated solely to men's gymnastics. Towards the end of my career, I started to work closely with the team at Turn to design custom uniforms that expressed who I was and where I came from, and they were always able to bring my ideas to life. For years, I wore uncomfortable gymnastics clothing until I started to wear Turn, whose uniforms are built with their attention to detail and quality in mind. Go check them out now at turn-gymnastics.com and enjoy the episode. Ash Watson. Hello. It's great to see you, mate. You it's too, It's really my good to see you. And like, we've done an episode before, so yeah. I think anybody listening to this, I would recommend going back on YouTube and listening to that because that tells your whole career and your story. I yeah. think for me today, I want to try and fill that gap between the last episode yeah. and where we are right now. I think that'd be right. really interesting because I know that a lot's happened in that time since yeah. you retiring from gymnastics, going out to Cirque, that yeah. not working out, COVID now being a full-time creator, essentially. Yeah. Um, so I'm really excited to get into that. But before we do, just tell me a bit about your life right now, mate, and what you've been up to. Um, so, I mean, you touched on it then. Sort of the timeline of events was um, retired, went over to Cirque du Soleil. Um, unfortunately, COVID happened, got sent home, moved in with my best friends, became a YouTuber, got braces for six months, <laughs> found the love of my life, and now I'm sat here. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and you've been, been skiing. You've just been skiing, right? Just been skiing. Yeah, yeah. yeah. What's that like? Because I'm still yet to. That's like you've never skied. When you retire from gymnastics yeah. or sport, skiing's like the first one on the yeah. list. I've still not done we it. We're never allowed to do all that. I've been before. <laughs> no. cause like ACL snaps all over it, innit? It's really fun. I've, I've been before once when I was 11. Right. And you saw you, you fearless then, aren't you? So I think I sort of picked it up pretty quickly then. Um, I haven't skied for 20 years, but then went out over the new year and. Picked up pretty quick. We like hooked. Fun. We yeah. hooked. Well, I had, a, I had an app that tracks like how fast you go. So right. my, ho- my goal for the whole week was to get as fast as possible, and I got seventy-seven kilometers an hour. And is that? I think half, it's like forty. Fast? It's like forty miles fast an hour. Forty miles an hour. Yeah. So, so like, were you got, like black runs by the end of the week? Well, like, I, I was doing all red runs. Right. So okay. like I go down the red because we're in a group as well. You got to stick with your pack, and then like I get towards the bottom, I get really excited, and then I just start bringing the the sticks and like you know, it comes <laughs> down like going down like that. <laughs> <laughs> I get to the bottom and get my app out. I'm like, oh, is that really good? Did you do any like coaching or training or anything like that? Or just go straight? You just go for it? What do you mean? You know, like, was the. Oh, like an instructor yeah, and stuff. Like a... um, so, one of the days we had like a group session. So, it was like four of us that follow an instructor and just sort of give me some tips. It's all in the hips, you see. Right. Extend the hips before you turn. Do you feel like you had any transferable skills from gym? Like, um, with skiing? Or? Well, I think, I mean, you know that gymnastics, I think, is a massive sport for transferable skills to any sport, just being able to move your body and balance and manipulate yourself. So I think that definitely came in handy, mm. um, skiing. Were there any things that you were like, oh, this is quite difficult, that you, you were surprised about or not really? Because you've tried lots of different, especially now with YouTube, you've tried a lot of different things, haven't you? Yeah, so do you mean anything or Was there anything wise? with the skiing that um, you were a bit like, oh, I, actually, this is, I didn't expect this to be I actually, I actually found the the slow stuff harder than the fast stuff. I think because right. I haven't had lessons on the basics. Right. So the slow stuff, I was sort of getting tangled up with my feet, but with a little bit of speed and momentum, you sort of just skirt, skirt, carving it. It's cool, mate. I'm excited. Connie actually turned around a few weeks ago. I was like, I'd want to go skiing. I was like, really? Oh, brilliant. That's like, amazing. Like, Let's go. I, was like, I really want to go. I didn't think you'd be it, up mate. for it. You'd love it. You'd be obsessed with it. <laughs> yeah, we you'd wanted them where I'd, yeah. be, I'd be up at four, yeah, and, four in the morning yeah. waiting would. for the ski lift to yeah. turn on. <laughs> you would. You'd love it, mate. You'd love it. Oh, mate, that's got me excited. Right then, let's go back, mate, to yeah. when you first retired. Because you're yeah. now slightly, re- you're a few years removed from your gymnastics career. So it'll yeah. be interesting to get some reflections just from that period of time. Mm-hmm. In those early few months after you did retire, yeah. what were your personal feelings at that point? Um, I think to start with, there's a little bit of feeling lost. Okay. Don't know sort of what to do with yourself or like, I guess you, you're questioning who you are as a person and your identity. You spend your whole life in this gymnastics bubble, build an identity of, I mean, even still now when I do stuff like this, it's all like, who are you and what you do? I'm like, oh, I'm Ashley, I'm 30 from Leeds and I'm an XGB gymnast. It's like, that's that's the title I put next to my, mm. myself, even still now, and I haven't done gymnastics professionally for, what, six, seven years now, maybe a little bit more, I'm sure my age. <laughs> um, so I guess like the early stages, I think it's very common in um, sports where, you know, that's that's you as a person and what, you, what you've done. When you come out of that, it's like, holy shit, there's a whole wide world out here. Mm what I'm going to do now, where do I go? And it's just so like overwhelming because there's, there's so much of it. 
When you when you retired at that point, Ash, mm. what, how did you feel about the sport as a whole at that point? Um, did you want a clean kind of break once you finished? You know, did you did you want to just go right? Let's part that. Here, let's go try and do a load of things and just get away from gymnastics for a while. Yeah, I mean, I I definitely did do that. Okay. Um, Was that a conscious thing that you decided to do? Or? Um, I actually think consciously, I. I wanted to still be involved because right. obviously you build social groups and friends. You know, my, my coach, Chris Law, I, I spent more time with him than I did probably my own father in the gym, like similar you with Sergey. Yeah. And like after gymnastics, I always thought that I'd spend a lot of time with there and with the friends or I'd, I'd probably coach or um, see Chris more. But like it actually turned out the complete opposite. It's almost that it just went that way naturally that I wasn't really involved in gymnastics afterwards. Mm. Um, but that, that it wasn't a personal conscious decision for me to do that. It's just what happened naturally. Was there any support when you were transitioning out? When you look back now, Ash, was there any... Um, were there people touching base with you at all or was there just none of that? You were just kind of left to yourself and was that quite an isolating experience? Um, there was a little bit of support... <sighs> I can't remember. She might be called Lindsay. Was she yeah, like the lifestyle? Lindsay Marsh. Lindsay. Yeah, yeah. I had I had some stuff to do with her afterwards, but it wasn't wasn't too intensive or too much. Um, maybe I could have been more forward with asking for help or okay. direction or something, but um, there wasn't too much, I guess, at the time. How did you feel about... You spoke about Chris there, mate. Because yeah. one thing I struggled with when I retired was exactly the same thing. And for a long time, like, Sergey had been my soundboard yeah. for, like, any issues or ideas I had because, yeah. you know, I trusted his opinion. He had mm -hmm. a lot more life experience. And I'd just go shoot my shit at him. Yeah. And then we'd kind of <laughs> had this conversation. He'd listen and then I'd figure it out a little bit. Yeah. And then when I stopped, that mm -hmm. was just gone and it was like there was a hole in my life there wasn't yeah. a an elder role model yeah because my coach had taken that role from my dad probably for a long time yeah yeah and it was like oh i'm just left to my own devices i've got yeah. to really have to figure this out by myself yeah did you find that as well um, and have you been able to fill that hole with somebody else that's become maybe a mentor in the last few years yeah i mean i'm super lucky i've got quite a big close family um obviously my two best friends luke and niall um, I guess they sort of covered that base, but I think I had a little bit of a different experience than you coming towards the end of my career because Chris wasn't in as much. Okay. So the last two or three years at the end of my career, Chris went back to lecturing at university. So, like, it wasn't quite as intensive, so I feel like I went through that transition a little bit earlier and almost faded out of it a little bit rather than when I retired, it was all off. So the last couple of years was a bit of a longer transition of that because right, yeah. he wasn't in the gym and I had to take ownership and have a bit of autonomy on my training and my life a little bit more. So you do you think that was probably a better way for it to go about? So it was one less thing for you to deal with when yeah. you finished? Do you know yeah, what I mean? totally. Yeah. Totally. I mean, it, pros and cons, both sides in it, because then also I didn't have my personal coach with me every day in the gym. So mm. obviously there's a con on that from a gymnastic side of it. Yeah. But then also for my personal self-development in my gymnastics and life, it helped because it's sort of taken the stabilizers off a little bit at a yeah. time at a time. Do you, do you think, Ash, that it, it really helped you in your career and also life afterwards in that next step that you studied at university alongside training? Do you look back at that now and go, oh, that was great because I wasn't just the gymnast, I was a student as well? Totally, totally, yeah. totally, totally. I mean, I think I might have even been one of the first ones to do yeah. further education when we were all training. I can remember being amazed at how yeah. much work you would do. I can remember looking at your work one time and being yeah. like, there's no way I would sit down and do that outside yeah. of doing six hours a day of training. Yeah. But like, if you have to, you will. Yeah. Um, but I, I totally recommend, because like I said before, there's a wicked wide world out there and you want to set yourself up for that when your gymnastic career, you don't know when it's going to end. It could end like that. It has happened to many people. So you need to set yourself up for something else. And then also while I was training, it was a great distraction. Um, I had almost a normal life outside mm. the gymnastics world. I didn't, I didn't live the traditional university lifestyle. I lived at home because I was looking enough that my gym was on campus at Leeds. It's so like I lived at home. I didn't go out and drink, didn't do any of that, but I still went to class, met new people, lived a normal life as such 
as well as yeah. doing the gymnastics. Do you think that interacting with other people that aren't in that fishbowl of gymnastics mm -hmm. is one of the really key important things that helps you then when you come out be able to just fit into normal life quickly because you know if you've only grown up around i remember i went to watch the british last year yeah because two of my friends uh, had gymnasts that are competing and yeah. i've never watched their kids do gymnastics yeah i did that on purpose because i don't i want when i see them it to be like how are you doing mate not like how are your gymnasts doing do you yeah, know what i mean yeah 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 so i went and then within five minutes, I was like, God, I used to be part of this world. This is so weird. Yeah. Like, this is it. Yeah. This is all they do all yeah. the time. Mm -hmm. and, and it's, it's exactly the a... same as well. You go back and it's all yeah, the same. Yeah, exactly Maybe a few same. different faces, but it's all but the... the same kind of like mechanism. Yeah, yeah. Do you feel like being at uni and being in a gymnastics environment, an elite sport environment, you were able to be almost humbled by people that had other problems outside mm -hmm. of sport? Because sport's tough, right? And you, injuries are very difficult. Like real life, you find once you retired, real life problems are way harder than yeah, that. And I look yeah. at athletes now and go, it's I wish so I could go simple. back. Yeah, I, I wish my problems could just be getting same. my grip on people. Yeah. Not, <laughs> not some of the stuff yeah. I like really have. Like, how do how yeah. the hell do I go about getting a mortgage? That's do you know what I mean? Like, so true. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. Do, do you think it helped you having yeah. that, just being around normal people your own age and hear, even just hearing their problems mm. and just help you go, wait a minute, like... This sport thing is super important, but there's a lot going on outside of this. Yeah, I mean, exactly, totally yeah. ditto. Like, it was, it was interesting to see because there is two completely different, different worlds. Like the the norms, <laughs> the civilians, <laughs> and the and the and, and the gymnasts. Yeah, yeah. And I can't really add to that. I mean, you just nailed that. <laughs> How do you? What did you love about gymnastics, Ash? Um. Great question, and I think recently I've been reflecting on that, and I've almost come full circle. Obviously, I'm in the YouTube game now, um, mostly doing gymnastics, um, and I've really found and discovered my love for gymnastics again, and it's in the whole, I never liked competing. I was never a, yeah, I'm ready to smash it at this competition. I was always a, I can't wait till this is done mm. sort of guy. Um, like Niall's completely different. I don't know how you are, but you what? I would probably I would probably say maybe a mixture of both. Right. It when you were feeling good. I think, I think I was, especially when I was younger, I was a bit of a competitive animal. Yeah. Just loved competing. Yeah, you were. I, loved, I wanted to beat everyone at everything. Yeah. But then I think I got to probably my early 20s. And I, I was, I had almost a conflict, I think, going on inside my own head of, right. I don't quite like who I am when I'm that competitive Interesting, yeah. person, mm -hmm. because it's very isolating. Yeah. You're doing your own thing. Yeah, I actually like the people around me. I want to be yeah. part of a team, and I kind of associate. Quite selfish. Art. Yeah, I kind, yeah. Of, I, I associated that mm -hmm. with quite negative things. Yeah, yeah. In terms of kind of who I wanted to be, I think. And so then yeah. I was always, there was always a battle going on inside my head. Yeah, it was like, okay. well, I want this, but I don't want to be that type of person. Yeah. And I kind of look at it now, and it is a very individual sport. Yeah. And I think you kind of have to be a little bit ruthless and you, cutthroat mm -hmm. and selfish, and I just didn't have it in yeah. me yeah, to yeah. quite be that mm -hmm. person. Do you know what I mean? So yeah, I yeah. think, actually, for me, a bit like you, looking back, I just, when I, when I think about starting gymnastics... It was because I was just getting told off at school and at home for moving my body. Mm. And I was in this environment where no one was telling me off. And I was like, yeah. this is great. Like, yeah, yeah. I can just be me. I can yeah. just be me. Uh, and I think at some point along my journey, I stopped being me. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? Yeah, um, yeah. So that's probably how I'd answer that question, mate. But yeah, it's interesting to mm. hear that you feel like you've gone full circle. And Yeah, because like now making content on social media, it's trying new skills or using my body to better do a challenge or something or do something that's scary or push my limits or do something that's not been done before. Like, I absolutely, can I swear on here? You can do what you Fucking want. Fucking love that. <laughs> <laughs> I, absolutely, I absolutely love it and I've really found the love for gymnastics and it's so good because we spent years and years and hours and hours and blood, sweat, tears building our craft of gymnastics and of our bodies and it's so good to better use that yeah. to, to do something that I really enjoy doing. And you've carved a path now that just wouldn't have existed 20... Which mm -hmm. is it's amazing, isn't it? That you've yeah. used your gymnastics mm -hmm. 
in a very unconventional way to yeah. the way that we were kind of brought up. Yeah. You know, it was just, you kind of, you go down that traditional route, yeah. you do English, British, European, yeah. Commonwealth, Worlds, like you go to the PTSD. Olympics, then you retire, <laughs> like it's just that. That's yeah. the only structure. Whereas now it's, no, you can go to the States and study. You yeah. could get offered a contract in Cirque du Soleil. Yeah. You could yeah. be, I literally just Stuntman. watched a documentary on Harry Potter's Stuntman over Christmas, yeah. which is the most unbelievable documentary. I recommend watching it. He was a gymnast. He used to train oh, in South it? Essex. It's a really cool yeah. story. Uh, he hurt you himself, do, yeah, he himself. Yeah, you can do that. You could do what you're doing. Like it's it's yeah. amazing, isn't it? That yeah. that's the gymnastics is the vehicle, but mm. you can take it in any direction that you want. Because back when we were trained, they were like one out, and it was be a coach. Yeah, that was, that was literally yeah. it. And then you come out of the sport, like a lot of people not liking the sport, but not knowing where to go, and it's like they just sort of just get just lean into coaching, and that's mm. what they do. That's and then a lot of those people, I feel like probably they go down that road but it's not what they want no, to be doing so and they then, resent they yeah. resent it and then that comes out in the personality yeah. and the way the coach and yeah exactly Ash I want to ask you a question a bit about what you said there um, courage and bravery yes you were always pretty fearless yeah do you think you're born with that or is it something that's developed great question I don't know how qualified I am to answer it it's just your opinion mate right yeah. <laughs> um you spent a lot of time around a lot of, you know, I'd imagine that a lot of the gymnasts that you're around are probably some of the bravest kids that mm -hmm. you get in general and you put them all in a room mm -hmm. and then you'll have the bravest of the brave there. Yeah. So, I think I'm not sure how much nature nurture it is. Um, as a family, as a whole, I, I think we are that way inclined because now I do YouTube videos with my twin brother, Ryan, and he's just the same. He'll just send it. Um, so I don't know whether there's something in that that my environment growing up or <clears throat> also Chris as a coach would say I'd, I'd do a skill that there's one that sticks in my mind on high bar. It was the invert era. So I'd do ginger roll invert. Mm. Um, and one time I like... I dislocated back in and laid on my back on the bar and came off and I was crying and swear and like Chris's mentality was like don't leave it on a bad one I don't leave it like that he was like do another one so then I'd be terrified <sighs> and I have to get up and do one more so I don't know whether that sort of conditioned me yeah. that way or whether maybe I was born with it or I was brought up with that mindset of more courage or bravery and maybe I'm just a little bit stupid I don't, yeah. I, I don't know do you feel like so those situations where you were having to go back up and do it again and mm. overcome that fear barrier, do you think yeah. there was a point where you got maybe a little bit older in your teenage years where you went, this is an advantage because if other people aren't prepared to do it, and mm. I am, I could maybe get ahead a little bit. Yeah, I mean... I remember you doing I mean, a triple straight off definitely. high bar. Yeah. I remember Sergey coming to me saying, Ash yeah. tried a triple straight, and I went, well, I'm not doing it. <laughs> <laughs> I went, great for Ash, Serge, I'm not doing it. And I just didn't talk to him for the rest of the session because I knew what he was trying to get me yeah. to do. I was like, no way. <laughs> Maybe a high bar sound? <laughs> um, well, totally. I mean, you definitely got an advantage if you're willing to do things that nobody else has done before. I mean, somebody has to be the first person to do it. Um, but why... Yeah. I'm inclined that way. I I, could, I couldn't tell you. You know, when you approached your gymnastics, Ash, was it was it purely? Did you approach it like right? We're going to build this, and this is obviously probably down to Chris as well. We're yeah. going to build a routine to try and win a competition, or we're going to build a routine that we are trying to win, but we mm. want it to be exciting. And because a lot of your gymnastics yeah. that you did was like, yeah, there are certain people where you go, I just love to watch that person yeah. do gymnastics. You know, it's exciting. They might yeah. not have reached the levels that others had in terms mm. of the amount of mev medals that they've collected, yeah. but I'll remember watching him yeah, because yeah. it was exciting. Does yeah. that make sense? No, totally. I mean, it's both sides, I guess. Um, I did deaf. Not many people do deaf. I mean, for a reason. Um, but it looks cool and people know it's tough. Um, I think that was definitely heavily influenced by Chris. Chris liked for us to do um, exciting skills, something to um, bring you out of the crowd. Mm. Um, but we also definitely tailored that for the highest art value. So on, like, on higher bar, trying to connect releases and doing um, squat half deference and scores bonus and, and that kind of stuff. But there's there's also other skills at the same value that are 
more consistent and mm. probably easy and more efficient to do in your routines. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but um, and maybe that's a conversation to have with Chris because, you know, when I was a kid, I just basically did what Chris yeah. told me to do. Yeah. It was only when I became a senior, well, an older senior, yeah. that um, I sort of had my own input and, yeah. and that kind of thing. But by that time, I was always, already doing those yeah. skills. So it's, it's what I knew, so... Did you, ever, ever, did you ever have any conversations maybe with national coaches or anybody else or teammates mm. where they, you know, said, look, Ash, why don't you just do like a more consistent routine or easier? Because I did. And I can mm. remember kind of being like, it's just not me. Yeah. Because there were times where people say, yeah. look, just don't try and do that. Do like a, yeah. just do a nice steady routine. I was like, that's just not me. Yeah. It's either going to be like up here or right yeah. down here. There's no <laughs> middle ground. Yeah. I'm yeah. going to go for a casino and yeah. ping off on my fingertips, <laughs> even when I'm not ready. Yeah. Or I'm not going to go up there yeah. and just do free catch I think, do you know what I mean? Like, yeah, totally. Like high bar, for instance, like everyone does catch ups for a reason. They're super consistent and... I don't want to say easier because I've never done catch ups myself, so I don't know. Um, but you think that they're more consistent than doing like the whole cove. I used to do four covatches and then do a death. <laughs> like, where's the. <laughs> I don't know, like the routine construction on that is gnarly. I don't know, but I don't know. It's just, it's just what I did. And yeah. it, part of being a. Um, in the gymnastics world of being a kid like you just did what you told and that's yeah. just what you did and that's what you do and when I was a senior it was almost too late to learn catch yeah, and yeah. you know def is cool and casino is cool and yeah. you do want to be the guy that's connecting casino Coleman and I guess you're, you're the guy pushing the limits and the boundaries rather than just fitting in and mm. I don't know just doing the the norm. Yeah, it's interesting that you say that, mate, because I feel like every squad that I've maybe been a part of over the years, there always is someone that you need to be pushing the boundaries. Yeah, mm -hmm. And then maybe sometimes, sometimes the unfortunate thing is that that person that pushed the boundaries means they're taking more risk and they're totally. maybe getting injured and they're maybe missing totally. opportunities. And those people underneath can kind You're of. You're describing like, my life. Basically, yeah. <laughs> you know, is that quite. Yeah. Was that quite difficult at times in your career to be like, look, I'm the guy that's like pushing this, mm. but then everyone, then people are coming up behind me, almost in my slipstream. Like yeah. if you were like a group of cyclists, you're going off front, yeah, and then they're coming in, and then yeah, you know I, mean? I mean, were but, you were you happy to be that also, guy? Like, but, wow, it was but great. Also, that I was that guy. Look back in, it's yeah. like yeah, you, you were the guy that people were trying to replicate or to try and be or or whatever. That is cool to look back on. Yeah. I do, I do a lot of reflecting back at my gymnastics career and I have no resentment. I mm. don't regret anything. I'm content with what I did, where I went. Um, I don't look at the competitions that I didn't go to. I just, all of that created the person I am today and I absolutely love myself today. So like, I can't yeah. not be thankful for that. Have you always had that mindset, Ash, or is no. that something you've had to work on? It's something I've had to work on, and obviously mm. um, I've had a, a lot of years and life experience since that that sort of helped me come to that conclusion. Mm. Mm. Ash, do you take do you look at the sport much anymore? Do you take much of an interest? Um, Not really. Because now, now at Leeds I, they've got two guys that are doing really well. Yeah, right they're Leeds. smashing it, yeah. and I mean, embarrassingly, no, I don't. But I never did when I was a gymnast. I think yeah. I was quite the opposite to you. You yeah. would... You, I'm sure you could now name off all the facts and the podiums <laughs> to the, the first Olympics. I don't know, but I honestly like couldn't tell you who's in a team now or has been or, mm. and I, I've just never been that way inclined. Yeah. Even when you know I was on the teams and was never really that into it and watching the other places. And I don't, I don't know why. Mm. I don't now follow any sports. I don't really follow a football team. I don't. Don't really do any of that. It's just for you. It was just about you. I guess yeah, just just yeah. doing it and enjoying it. And now I, I'm in, more involved in gymnastics than I have been in the last five yeah. six years. Um, but I guess I don't know. Selfishly, it's just for my own enjoyment and loving the sport and trying to be entertaining. Just push that out there. Yeah, um, I, I feel a similar way, mate. Because when I try and watch gym now, I watch mm. for five minutes and I'm like, oh, yeah, I'm a bit bored. So do, do you not? Do you not? Not really. No, you don't. No, that, surpri start, that surprises me. I've started doing a bit more. I started watching a little bit more, but honestly, yeah. oh, I don't take much. And it's not that I'm not interested. I just yeah. get a bit bored. Right. It's like I exhausted that part of my life, yeah. and now I'm like, I'd rather watch 
mm. UFC or football Rack, yeah. or go yeah, and do yeah. sports myself. A yeah. bit like you, like now my approach to like keeping fit and doing sport now is like, what can I do? Mm. Like, what can my body do? I want to go and yeah, try yeah. different things. I went to jiu jitsu yesterday for the did first you, time. Did you? First time yeah, ever. I've just dabbled got, a little bit. It's just cool, got strangled it? for an hour. <laughs> and I, I turned up and I was like, I don't know what I'm doing here. Uh, but it, it was great. It was, was like, quite inclusive. And then it, it, and it, it's bloody hard. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. My legs are fucked in yeah. <laughs> Just from like trying to grab some bloke's legs yeah. and like pull him over. I just, I didn't know what yeah. I was doing. But I was like, this is great because it's new. Yeah. I'm starting at the bottom rung mm-hmm. of a the ladder. There's so much to learn. Yeah. Like, it's totally. cool, quite like humbling and stuff. Yeah, yeah. Um, tell me about me. How did it come about that you got approached by Cirque du Soleil? Because I feel like there was a, I think it was maybe the British in 2019. Mm-hmm. And I think someone came up to my dad and asked whether he thought I would be interested in it. My dad yeah. was like, no, I don't think so. Was it around that time? Yeah, was well, that how were, you, that... were you retired then? You I wasn't were, quite, retired, I wasn't retired yet. No, no, no. Yeah, so I think a scout from Cirque du Soleil came to the British to watch. Um, and I think he obviously was speaking to Paul Hall and the head coaches and stuff, asking if there's anybody that they think. Um, and obviously I think I'd been retired a year. Right. Um so this came over to speak to me. At the time, I was in the whole lost period, didn't know what I was doing. I was just coaching a little bit of adult class, um, not really knowing where I wanted to go. Didn't really want to think too deeply into it because then I'd um, feel sad because I didn't know, do you know what mm. I mean? Um, the fear of the unknown, isn't it? Um, so he just came over and approached me. and was like, um, so just to leave, I thought about it. I never had thought about it. Um, opportunity to to go out whatever he was like I'll contact you in a couple of weeks um, and he did it just it was a perfect situation it's a it was for a brand new show we were doing a um, we were creating it it was a creation and it was a P-bar act right. really cool actually it was um, a set of P-bars three metres off of the floor okay. with another set next to it so there's four bars like that inside a cube that was rotating. <laughs> Very certain to say. With the bars like an equal width or was there a gap yeah. between the two sets? Yeah, so it was like, yeah, so it's like you did your width in between the sets, you did also, like three there was width. four bars in a row. There's four bars like, wow. in a row. I proper like gym yeah. over or whatever it was, four yeah. in a row, but it was three metres tall. Right. Then on the outskirts, I don't know if this is confidential, the show's out now. So. <laughs> <laughs> but the PBR Axe isn't in it, but, um, and there was, Bars around the outside. So imagine this table, the, the bars are across the outside and the four bars are in the middle. Right, okay. So you'd be jumping in and out and under right. and all that kind of stuff. So like I was perfect for it. So then I just had to send in a video of me doing gymnastics and P bar skills and stuff. Um Don't you have to send a video of like you singing and things as well? Yeah. Yeah. Right. I sang um Old Town Road. Okay. That was the craze at the time. That that song had just come out. Yeah, I absolutely yeah. loved it. Um, I'm going to take my horse through the <laughs> Old Town Road. <laughs> <laughs> and I had to do like a... This is like totally out there for me. Like I'm a very introverted person. I might not seem like it sometimes, but I am. And like to like sing, dance, act was just not me. Um, but I had to like improv like four emotions on this instrumental song that they played and I had to like have like sorrow and, and then I had to be like really happy dancing around and it was sadness and heartbreak <laughs> and it, was, <laughs> it was a whole experience but like I had to do it you have to do that stuff um, so yeah they the wanted me and I flew out to Canada and I lived there for six months wow and was were mental. you heavily involved in the creation of the act yeah was it like you guys designing it as you were doing it yeah as well? so I was part of the P-Bar Act, but I was also part of the house troupe. Um, and it was a brand new creation, and we were involved in most of it. So the the show now is called Echo. Have you seen it advertised? Uh, I don't think so, mate. But... It's like a, a ginger girl with, like, clouds and stuff oh, okay. and animals and that. Do they, is that a travelling one? or? The, um, they... It's a travelling one. Right. I think it's in America at the moment for a little while. Okay. Um, but, like, with that, I got to test all of the... Um, I don't know what to call it. Like the wires that come down from the ceiling, it brings you up and down, and the cube are rotating. So like we were tied up on our sides, like running around the cube, <laughs> and they were like projected on imagery of the the land and water, and we'd like somersault over the land and come. Yeah. Like it, was, it was really cool. Yeah. And I'll have to 
learn dances and they did try to teach us how to sing but I think they, they gave up pretty quick on that one. <laughs> what was it like spending six months? What's that training like? Because I, I guess one thing that I've heard is that when you go to Cirque du Soleil, you're a retired athlete but you end up training just as much as you were when you were actually competing. Yeah, I mean, it, it is quite intensive um, for obvious reasons like if you watch some Cirque shows, there's things that they do on there are just incredible. So you, you, you need to be fit, you need to be healthy, you need to be on your game. Um, so I, I went to the HQ, which is in Montreal, a little bit like university. There's like digs one side and then there's the place the other side and, you know, standard day, be like, have breakfast, then go over to um, dance for one section of the show and have to learn a routine or figure it out. Then like an hour break, then I go over to acting where we'd put on a, like, mask right. and transform into something it's just all about getting you out of your comfort zone and yeah. comfortable and confident and expressing yourself there's loads of work on stuff like communicating but not through voice through like as little actions as possible and body language because if you imagine you're doing a show and you know i've just i've just hurt my wrist and i know i can't get on there and do my bit of the show like how do i communicate to you that i'm injured or i'm going to need you to do it for me or something if I can't go, Sam, like, can you yeah, jump on there yeah, for me, please, Without mate? the audience noticing. Yeah, it's just, like, yeah. really cool, intricate things like that that we had to learn was really, really interesting. What was it like then, mate, when you spend... Did you spend the whole six months doing that? Yeah. And then when it broke down, how, how did that come about? Um, so... Was it a combination? Am I right, around the same time, someone passed away? Is that... In, in a Cirque show, someone um, someone fell or something. Was that oh, around that same time? I don't know. I, I, a different time. I can't remember if if so. Yeah. But and then it was just just purely the COVID, COVID shut it down. Yeah, I mean, it goes all into a room. We were literally we'd look, we moved downtown. So what happens is every Cirque show that's a creation is done at the HQ and then it moves downtown in Montreal. Um, and like that's when they do the premieres and they're up and now like they get like first dibs, I think. So we'd moved down there, we'd done like one training session there. So we're like a month, two months out from our premiere. Um, then the brought us into a room, was like this thing called COVID-19. Um, so we're going to have to, as precaution, send you all home for three weeks, bring you back and we'll just crack on like normal. So I'm like, cushed it. So one of um, my friends on the show, Christian, was Hungarian. Um, he didn't want to go home. So I was like, mate, come back to Leeds with me. We'll party for three weeks with the boys. Then we'll come back. He ended up staying in my parents' house for three months. <laughs> really? <laughs> yeah. Wow. Because we had the lockdowns <laughs> oh, and the yeah. borders got um, shut. When was it, when was this in the year, mate? Was it like, So like, it was uh, first when COVID came. So I think it was March. March, yeah, March. I think, it was, I think it was March. Because right. um, I think I went out in like September time-ish and then um, March to so like the centre so and I was like buzzing like I was just going to just prat around and then literally lockdown hit and that was a tough time wasn't it what did you do for lockdown not a lot mate no. <laughs> I moved back into my mum and dad's house yeah. and was just I think initially wasn't sure what I was going to do mm. uh, and then I worked out pretty quickly I'm going to need something to structure my day around so I did about an hour of exercise a day and then just tried to build some kind of routine around it because okay. I was in a very much in a limbo stage of not being on the squad yeah, not being allowed to go to the gym like everybody else yeah, was okay, and I was yeah. like well, what do I do in my life right yeah. now like oh, I don't know what to do okay. so initially I was training but mm -hmm. not for training I was training because I was trying to keep this yeah. alright were you doing gymnastics training or were you doing I was trying physical... to do bits mate but I was yeah. in the garden and stuff and yeah. doing like just thinking of all the circuits I've done in my life yeah. what kind of things can I do yeah. I was doing all sorts of random stuff but I, yeah. at that point I was very much deep into my depression anxiety right, okay, yeah. experience so I was mm. like I'd been in therapy for three months come out of that been yeah. pretty good trained then all of my safety mechanisms and crutches had just gone away with COVID and I was like, yeah. I was having to face reality then, yeah. being in that very isolating situation. Yeah. So I struggled during that period of quite a lot. Yeah. And one thing I was going to ask you about actually is when you came back after that and you found out that, how did you find out that the show isn't going to happen like that's done? <clears throat> um, it was very up in the air for literally the, the three months. I literally just got a phone call for about three minutes maximum. And we're just like, hi, Ashley, hope you're well. Um, sorry to inform you that um, we're not going to ask you to come back to, to do the show anymore. 
I was like, oh, oh, that sucks. Um, all right, see ya, bye. <laughs> that was that was literally really? it. That and was we, literally did it. Did you get paid? Do you get paid for the training phase and all that? Uh, yeah, and yeah, we got we got paid for that. You yeah, get yeah. Paid. yeah. Wow. And it, at that point, mate, is that really feeling like a right? I'm back at square one now. <laughs> well, it, it was identical mirror image of when I retired from gymnastics. It's like holy shit balls. What what's now? Um, and then you just do the same thing again. Um, and I did do that. I mean, like for me, COVID was a lot different to what you did. Mm. I just boozed and played Warzone the entire time. Wasn't great. I mean, my first reality check was I was outside. I go through phases and I pick up stuff. And at one point I was trying to juggle. So then I'd, I'd made my own like juggling clubs. I'd try to juggle <laughs> four clubs. Right. Like from Cirque, like, I'd dabbled a little bit at Cirque when I was home. Like I got a, um, a glimpse of myself in the window, of, like my back rolls <laughs> hanging over. I was like, oh God, actually, what are you doing to yourself? Yeah. Did you struggle in that period, mate? Just mentally? Like, oh, totally. With your self worth as well? Were you just oh, like, mm -hmm. I don't know who I am? Like, how do I fit into this? Whereas... Totally. I mean, for me, it was pure ostrich, head in the sand, um, denial, don't think about it. Let's just drink and play another game. Mm. I was that was that was my life for like three, four months. Did you have a? I had a moment. I think I think it was later on that year when we did that second lockdown. Do you remember that second lockdown yeah. in November? Mm -hmm. I have a clear moment where I can remember thinking, "Fuck! If I don't do something, no one's helping me." Yeah. Like mm -hmm. I'm gonna retire, mm -hmm. and there's literally no one's gonna care. Yeah. I've got to make sure that these 20 years count for something. So and I started, the cogs started turning. Mm -hmm. I was like, what can I do? Did mm -hmm. you have a moment like that around that time where you went, yeah. if I don't do something here, yeah. ain't no one, literally mm -hmm. no one's coming to help me. Yeah. I've got to force something into action. I mean, yeah, like very, very similar. Um, I was on universal credit at the time because obviously I'd, I wasn't working, no job. Um, I mean, I rang... Like Universal Credit rang me and was like, oh, what were you doing for work? And I was like, oh, I'm, I was a performer at Cirque. And basically they sort of just giggled and was like, that's not a fucking job. Right. Like, Thanks, mate. But basically for the second lockdown, um, me, Luke, Niall, Niall's girlfriend at the time, and another friend of ours, we went into a house together. So we like rented a place for a month. Um, and it was there that we was doing this, this, the same stuff, boozing, playing games and doing whatever like Niall and Luke had YouTube channels um Niall's girlfriend at the time started YouTube so they were all working I wasn't working um and then I had a phone call from Universal Credit basically saying like if you could basically you have to try and find a job and I wasn't trying to find a job so then there was like um you need to prove that you're doing it and I was like oh, I'll just cancel it then because they were going to cancel it anyway and then that was my oh shit moment because I've sort of just been getting away with it for so long and I haven't had to think about my future or where I was going or who I want to be. And that was a realisation of, shit, it's on me. Yeah. And when I think about it now, Ash, you're just built for content creation. <laughs> <laughs> when I think about the yeah. type of athlete that you are, yeah. also your no. personality and what mm -hmm. you like, you're always just someone that's just dead funny. I always remember you walk into your room in the morning, you'd just be watching How I Met Your Mother or, <laughs> or something like that. Yeah, I love those star shows. Yeah, yeah, so you're built for that, do you know yeah. what I mean? But at the time when you started mm -hmm. doing that, you, you've said mm -hmm. like today that you were pretty introverted. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Was there an internal... And external pushback in terms of you. Did you feel like this isn't me? Was mm. there was there a barrier you had to get over? Yeah, it's really really interesting point. I'm still like sort of trying to figure it out that um, my default is introverted. I am an introverted person. However, everything I do in life is extroverted. Like I have extroverted friends, um, gymnastics. You'd have to perform. I went. I, I went abroad to live and work a Cirque du Soleil. Where I'd have to perform. Very extroverted. Um, I find myself in conflict all of the time, and I'm trying to work out whether that's good or bad. I feel like there's argument to say that if you're introverted, you should do extroverted stuff. Take you out of your comfort zone. Do stuff that you wouldn't. You wouldn't do. And then also, then there's a conflict of. I'm doing things that don't match my personality mm. type and stuff like where where's it fit and are you only introverted or are you only extroverted or is there a full bar of where you are and does that 
buffer depending on how you feel, how energized you are, or where you are in your life at that time. I, I don't know. Yeah, it's interesting, mate, because when I when you started doing the YouTube stuff, mm. I can remember having a few conversations with people saying, "Have you yeah. seen what Ash is doing?" Mm. It doesn't seem like Ash. Yeah, and I said it myself. I was like, "Yeah, it doesn't seem like Ash." Yeah, but it's only now, a few years later, I go, "Yeah, that is Ash." Yeah. Did you have to get to a point where you almost? Because you said earlier mm. in the podcast, like, I love who I am, like, I love yeah. myself. But you don't, I don't imagine that you started there. Like, no, for me, yeah. I, I'm exactly the same. Mm-hmm. Like, to the point where Connie's like, God, you love yourself. I'm like, no, no, mm. not like that. Like, yeah. but I just love who I am. Like, yeah. I like my life. It's yeah. great. That's great. But to it's hear, taken by the me way. a long, thanks, man. Mm. But it's taken me a long time to get there. Yeah. And it meant me being at the complete opposite of that to yeah. get to that space. Yeah, yeah. Did you feel like you had to get to that point to be able to now put yourself in front of a camera mm-hmm. and be extroverted yeah. and not care what anybody else yeah. thinks about you? I mean, yes, and also it's it's a forever thing as well. Like there's loads of times where I'm in front of the camera and I hated and still do to some respects like filming myself with a, like that, like talking to the camera. Like I love being myself and doing my thing in front of the camera, but it's not like directed to the cameras okay. as such. Yeah. It's almost like my way of getting around that whole thing. But like at the start, it was very uncomfortable for me to sort of do the YouTube stuff. I sort of started because it was my only sort of idea of what to do. But it's only recently that I've come round full circle to actually start to to love it. Mm. And it's, and has it taken you some time to kind of get to the point where like, right, this is where I'm going to take it. You know, because for a long time, mm-hmm. you, Luke, and Ash would do things together all the time. Yeah. And you'd like feature on each other's yeah, stuff. Whereas yeah. now you kind of, mm-hmm. it seems to me from the outside, you're yeah. now carving your mm-hmm. own path. To- totally, totally. I mean, we sort of, it's what happens in that I sort of clung on to them two. And, and we did with each other because it's, it's easier to sort of do all of that stuff as a group, as a pack. You got each other's back and, and, and whatever. And, it was really tough for me to do stuff solo. However, now life situations that um, I live a little bit of distance away from Nile and Luke now, I live with Joanna. Um, those guys don't necessarily want to film as much as I do in the gym doing gymnastics. Mm. Luke wants to go do more weight stuff in the gym. Mm-hmm. Niall's a little bit around and about, doesn't really know where he wants to sort of put his attention. I want to do gymnastics. It's almost like I got a grab hold of it myself and yeah. and like you said steer it in the direction that I want to go for a lot of time I sort of just treading water and just going with the flock whereas whereas now I'm more confident comfortable to go do you know what no I want to go to the gym by myself prop up a camera speak to nobody <laughs> <laughs> and prat around and just yeah. do what I want to do and yeah. hopefully make some epic fails <laughs> what did you learn Ash from watching <laughs> what did you learn from watching Niall burst onto the YouTube scene doing mm. something very different in a mm-hmm. sport that was very traditional and in that process of him going from to a point at which I can remember it must have been about 2018 going going with you guys on a night out in Leeds I think and people recognising him as a YouTube guy and me thinking that's weird yeah, he's not the yeah. gymnast he's a really good gymnast medal. <laughs> yeah he's, they're going oh it's the guy off YouTube yeah yeah or people asking me do you know that guy off YouTube yeah. like what have you learnt from watching that before you then gone into it yourself yeah that were like real thing takeaways for you to go well, that's a speed bump i'm gonna avoid that or was it was it very helpful being able to have witnessed that over four or five years before you went into it yourself um yes i mean i think niall's journey was quite unique because he absolutely blew up and like you say he, he was the first one to do it um when he first did it i didn't really pay much attention to it you know i I was in my lane he was in his you know i was heavily in his videos but i was just a background character i really enjoyed that because i could just jump in and out whenever i needed to really enjoyed it it wasn't until i sort of started doing youtube myself i realized how hard it is Mm. um to sort of uh, switch on and say the right things or keep people entertained or come up with the ideas and, and that sort of stuff i mean I don't know whether I'd... Mm, I'm not sure. Right. Not Are there sure. any? What's your relationship like with social media? 
Were there any pitfalls that you were aware of? You're like, right, if I'm going to put myself out there and all of a sudden, mm. potentially, yeah. this could go from 10,000 people to watch my videos to hundreds yeah. of thousands to millions, that's a lot of feedback and a lot of noise. Yeah. Was there anything that you were like ap aw just aware of going into it? Um, I mean, definitely the the negativity of the comments. Um, people say some horrendous stuff online, mostly because it's anonymous and... I seen it wasn't necessarily Niall, but it was actually a friend of ours that got into the YouTube game, um, but came quite heavily invested in reading the comment section. Right, okay. Um, and took it all too much to heart, and it was really getting to them. So, like, I took from that is, I'll do my best, I'll be my true self, I'll make the best entertaining videos that I can, put it out there, and then it does what it does. People think about it however they want to think mm -hmm. about it, and that's fine. Yeah. It's not on me. I control the controllables. I do my bit, have as much fun as possible, make it as much fun for them as possible, and then that's it. Move on. What's the, what's the next thing? Yeah. So you're a type of person that when you post and that, you're not going back to see what yeah. the feedback is. It's yeah. post, it's done, move on. Yeah, yeah. I mean, obviously that like, I'll scroll through and I do like to reply to comments and, and like comments and stuff, but if there's a negative one that pops up, you know, I'll just scroll straight past, I'll delete it or whatever. Just, I try not to let it take any of my time yeah. or any of my energy. What's your approach to creating content, Ash? So obviously you don't have to give away your secrets, but <laughs> when you sit down and you're like, right, have I got an idea mm. like, or I'm going to film? Like, do you turn up to the week knowing what you're going to film that week? Like, how does it work? Yeah, I mean, I'm quite organised and planned. I do like my lists and I need. I, I do like to know exactly what we're doing. Um, so, like, for instance, we're going to go film some content together. Um, so then I know I'm going to be um, training with you, filming with you, so I'm like, oh, what, what can I do with Sam? What's going to be appealing to the viewer? Right. And what do we have in common? So we used to train together doing gymnastics. It's like, okay, let's do a let's do a one v one. Let's do a battle off. Right. I mean, right. you don't know that yet, but that's right. what we're doing later. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> I wish I had done jujitsu yesterday. <laughs> <laughs> um, but I mean, like most of my process now is just trying to find funky, cool, um, out there, slightly dangerous, um, quirky stuff online, and try to copy it and use the skills that I've crafted all those years into trying to do it. Yeah. I mean, like, I spend most of my time now trying women's gymnastics. Right. <laughs> it, it's really, it's really fun. <laughs> but then also, a part of it, I love doing it and trying it. It's a great challenge. But then also, like, for the viewer, I show a, a, a video of a small, petite, flexible, elegant, young girl slash woman, and then it pops to me stood on the beam <laughs> short bald chunky guy <laughs> and they're like what the fuck is he about to do <laughs> he's about to try and do that yeah. and that that's that's what i try and create in my video and then they want to stick around and see me ultimately do it but most likely fail how important ash are the parts that the viewer doesn't see in terms of your planning that process mm -hmm. uh the edit inside yeah how much you think into, like you just said it there, thinking about what the audience wants to see, what yeah. audience on what platform totally, is going to work yeah. well. Like mm -hmm. how much, how important is that in comparison to just making a really good piece of content? So you might mm. produce, let's mm. say, the you might film a really good video, but how mm. important is the way in which you then distribute that? Yeah, I mean, totally. I mean, YouTube, like your thumbnails, your shot window. So if you if you don't have a good thumbnail for your video, like nobody's going to click it and it doesn't matter how good your content is. If they don't click the video, they're not watching it. So the planning involved is I've just finished um, in December in Vlogmas. So that's um, a video every day for the whole of December. So obviously the logistics of setting that up is quite intense. Mm. So for one, you got to think of the ideas that are good and you think that somebody's going to want to watch. Then you gotta think about where you're gonna do it, what you're gonna do in the video. You gotta get there and film it. So it might take, on average, about uh, 45 minutes to an hour to film a bit of content if it's planned. But then when you go home, I'm fortunate enough to have an editor now. Um, so I'll send it away to the editor. I'll make my own thumbnails and it'll come back. But like, 
I've taught myself how to edit on Premiere Pro. I've taught myself Photoshop because I wanted control over all of my content. Mm. So like, a, let's say, an Instagram reel that's 45 seconds. It might take me 10, 15 minutes to film, but then it's going to take me two hours to edit it back home. So like it's... I think from the outside, looking into the life of a content creator, it looks super easy mm. because there's... Like, they look at my life and they go, he's got to gym, he prats around. I mean, I, I do that. Yeah. It's super fun and, yeah. and that's why I've, I've tried to mm. carve my way that way because I really, really enjoy doing it. Mm. Um, but I guess some people, well, they don't see the the background as the, what's the, the iceberg in it. Of yeah, the, the that's what you the, see and the, then... Everything that's underneath. Yeah, ex yeah. exactly. I mean, I'm not... I don't for one second want to sound like I'm complaining. Or whinging. Or compl or whinging. Yeah, it's I'm just the reality. Absolutely not. Like, yeah. I mean, I, and, and I love it. Like, I go around for family too, uh, my parents, and, you know, everyone's got a normal, proper job, nine to fivers, and then it's like, they see my videos, and what you been up to this week, Ash, and, you know, it's prattling around, and um, so you do a backflip on a beam and stuff, um, which I'm super fortunate yeah. and lucky to have. Do, how much do you track like the information you get the feedback you're getting back so like vlogmas ash mm -hmm. just just for people that are interested in creation and yeah, youtube okay. and content when you get all of those videos and then you get all that that data of those yeah. views mm -hmm. how much are you then looking at that and going well that one worked that yeah. one worked on that platform mm -hmm. are you doing that yeah totally all the time totally yeah. you you've got to do aren't you i guess it's like gonna in a in a shop like you see which ones are selling more and if the one's selling more than others you put that to the front or whatever so what i tend to do is on my youtube channel i started doing everything so i do some sit down sort of question videos i do like his and hers videos with my girlfriend or then i do gymnastics whereas like now the gymnastics ones got more attention and people mm. wanted to see it. So then I sort of tailored my content more over that way to a point where now I only basically do gymnastics content unless it's vlogmas and I need a yeah. couple of fillers. <laughs> <laughs> so you're basically just exploring and then seeing what works and then going, totally. right, let's... You... It's all about experimenting yeah. in all aspects of your life. Experiment, experiment, and then sort of that's when you sort of tailor down and zone in on mm. the area that A, you enjoy doing and B, people like to see all the, um, the gain from it. You know, you were talking about chatting with your family there, Ash. Do you feel yeah. like after your gymnastics career, it would just always be almost impossible for you to fall into a normal nine-to-five job? Yeah, I mean, I'd, yeah. I've, I've, I've always said that I'd, I never wanted a normal job. Um, definitely not an office job. I just, like you were saying, you just love being free and using your body, and I just... I never want to lose that and trying to create a life that allows me to use my body um, to succeed. Do you have like a, not like a five-year plan, Ash, but do you have, have you had a moment at all where you've sat down and gone, this is what I want from my life, this is where I want it to go, and has that helped you steer yourself in the direction you're going at all? Um, not no. really, do you not think that way? No, I, I I do, but I honestly sat here right now. I I don't know where I'm mm. gonna be in five years, and I I don't with much confidence know exactly where I want to go. All I all I know is I want to have fun on the journey. Yeah. Um, and wherever that may take me, I don't know. But it comes back to experimenting. I'm just yeah. want to try loads of loads of things and see what works. I mean, I I lent into the circuit, it didn't work out. I'm leaning to YouTube now. That's really working. I'm enjoying it. And then I, I have no idea where mm. that's going to take me in the future. But I'm excited to see. What advice, Ash, would you give for anybody that is thinking about getting into content creation? Mm hmm maybe is someone similar to yourself that has these great ideas, right, but feels yeah. very much like an introvert. Yeah. What would be the best piece of advice you could um, give someone? I'd say um, just have a have a plan and a think of what content you could create because obviously there's loads of content out there. If you, for instance, if you don't want to be face on with a camera, do voiceovers, write a script, and you can talk over your content. If you don't want any of that, you can put text in, subtitles or something. So I mean, so try and manipulate the content 
to how you want to do it. There's no, there's no textbook or standard mm. default that you should, a blueprint that you should do. Like you, you have the creativity freedom to do it yourself. Yeah. Yeah. So if you don't want to talk on camera, then just do all visuals. Amazing. Ash, what are your plans for the future for the rest of this year and then moving forward? Uh, I know we've just obviously had that conversation where you've just said, I'm not quite sure where I'm going to go, <laughs> but, but what are the plans for the rest of this year? Um, More of the same or? Definitely in the near future, more of the same. Like I said, the last sort of six months, I've really found my groove and what I really love doing. So I'm really doubling down on sort of making this gymnastics content. Um, I'm fortunate enough to have a couple of trips abroad coming up um, with Jay, my girlfriend, and other work-related stuff. So I get to meet some really cool people, try some really cool stuff. Um, so, yeah, I'm just excited just to take it a day at a time. I don't have anything too far in the future but um really enjoying what i'm doing now so more of that it's just great mate it's great to see that you've um you've managed to find